Hello Year 7 and welcome back to another video of the Pirouette Table Set Lesson 3 and it's all about the Pirouette Table and how it is laid out. Um, today's lesson you'll need a pen, a pencil, a piece of paper um, or the slot or the noise you printed out, that's fantastic. And if you've got the answer from the last lesson, we'll go through them after the retrieval so you know what to do. So the first slide, the retrieval is now on the screen. So pause the video, four questions, off you go. So, how do you do? Check your answers now. Again, if you need to pause the video now, you feel free to revise. Next slide is on separating mixtures. So, again, pause the video, retrieve what can you remember. How do you get on, guys? Again, check your answers. How do you get on? Again, pause the video if you need to. And the final slide is back to this topic. So, drawing atoms. So again, pause the video now, you've got four questions, off you go. How do you get on guys? The bottom question, draw the ele uh, oxygen, other than six electrons like this, six to get the three pairs. You can, it doesn't matter where you put them, as long as there's six in that ring, that's absolutely fine. So last lesson, I asked you to draw me the first 20 atoms. Okay, here they are. Have a little look through now, check your answer with your sheet if you need to. Again, really good exercise. Hopefully, you found that okay. Again, if you didn't, if you didn't, message your teacher, ask for some help. But that is what it should look like. And today, I want to go. Actually, what do these numbers mean here? So, along the top, we've got one to zero, and the bottom, we've got one to seven. And actually, you need to know what these numbers mean and how it is laid out this table. So, why? How does it work? So, we're going to look at that now, and we're going to go to our new knowledge sheet now. On your sheet, it's perfect. I made sure it's perfect. But actually, on my sheet, I made a little mistake. So I would change numbers here, but ignore that. Your sheet's perfect. Now, along the top, we've got number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and zero. These are what we call the groups. So each column is grouped with group one, group two, group three, group four, group five, group six, group seven, group zero. They are in their groups. Along the side, we've got these numbers here. These are called the periods. So you've got period one, period two, period three, period four, period five, period six, period seven. So these two numbers, these two terms will come out to in a second. But why was the period table given its name? Why was it given its name? And that is because similar properties. of elements occur at regular intervals and you can regular intervals we could actually describe that as periodically so what i mean by that is that if we look to examples here group zero these are all in group zero because they are all gases group one they are all very reactive metals okay so what i mean by periodic table is every regular interval the elephant properties re will reappear so question two what are the verb columns called now, we've already done this they are called the groups now why that's really important is because and elements group number tells you the number of electrons in the outside shell. So what I mean by that is if every element in group one so lithium sodium potassium rubidium they all have one electron in the outside shell so you drew lithium sodium potassium you notice they're all group one they've all got one in the outside shell likewise look at group three but you drew boron and aluminium they have three on the outside shell they're in group three so the group number tells you the, peer, the number of electrons in the outside shell finally question three in the period table, what are the horizontal rows called? Now they are called the periods. And like they've got a pattern as well. 
So an element period number tells you the number of electron shells the element has. So that's back to the period table. That means everything in period one has one shell. Everything in period two has two shells. Period three, period three shells. So again, if we look, for example, at uh, group uh, period two, sorry, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, when you drew them, they only had two shells. So there's some good knowledge there, guys. Really, really good knowledge to know. I've got a bit more knowledge and I'm going to leave you some revision on this. So there's three more questions on the back. And you will notice this period table here. Okay. I have got it color coded. And actually, in the period table is an imaginary line here. The metals are on the left hand side. So you've got all your metals in yellow, and all your non metals are in like a purpley blue color. And that tells us actually all these non metals you can see are all in quite high groups and the non metal and the metal sorry are all in the low groups so there's a couple of groups that are really important to know about so group one metals this group here they are called the alkali metals now next lesson we'll do some lots some more time on this but they are really reactive and when they're out of water they form an alkali the group seven and group seven here the non metals Okay, they are what we call halogens. They are very dangerous and toxic and nasty, actually, not very nice ones. And finally, what is another name for the group eight zero elements? Now, I've done group eight or group zero because on my this table here is group eight, but on the other one is group zero. It doesn't matter, it's the same thing. They are what we call the noble gases. So they are all gases. At room temperature. So what I've given you there is six questions, okay, new knowledge. I would like you now to spend a couple of minutes, okay, just revising and making sure you've learned the questions. So make sure you do that for me. So pause the video now if you need to. So in terms of slot for safe lesson, Okay, you need to be uh, having to go to the worksheet I've attached to show my homework. If you haven't printed it off, don't worry, here it is. So it is, first of all, the colouring task, you need some colouring in. Now, if you haven't got the pet printed off, you can draw this out for me. I like to colour code appear at the table, and you've got some questions to answer underneath. Likewise, the second part of the question is here. So we can colour code this table for me to colour in metals and non-metals, and also answer the three questions. And if you've done that, the final question is a little exam question for you. Just free marker, three questions there using letters provided. So you, if you can't print it off, you can work from this. We can work from the attached and give that a go for me. That'd be amazing. So we'll go through the answers in the next lesson. In terms of that, we're going to do group one. It's a fantastic lesson. I'm gutted I'm not showing this in real life. I've got a really good video to show you. Um, so do some review practice before then. Make sure you do the slot on Friday. We'll do your recall test for these three lessons. And if you haven't done this already, share the video, make sure everyone's had a little look at it. And I will see you soon. All the best. And please, please, please stay safe. Bye.